Hello, my name is Veronica Oagage and my colleague is Akira Barbara. And we are going to talk about the study of our art. Now, we're going to start with the external features and we're going to try to classify it depending on what we see. Classification. The art um, belongs to Kingdom Animalia because as we can see it has no chlorophyll. So, yeah, and then it belongs to Phylum Codata because it has a post anal tail. Um, it belongs to class Mammalia because, okay, this one we have right here is a female rat. So we shall see the mammary glands. You can see Sorry, the nipples. The mammary glands will be seen from inside, but um, outside we can see the nipples. Yeah, they're right here. There are six of them. Yeah. And then it has thick fur, these hairs. Um, it possesses external sexual organs. Um, it has two external ears. And then it has a um, five digit pattern of limbs. Okay, of the feet, basically, as we can see, there are one, two, three, four, and five. And then it belongs to Oda Rodentia because it burrow, as we all know, the rodents burrow, so that is why it belongs to Oda Rodentia. And the genus is Ratus, species is Albinicus. So the scientific name of a rat is Ratus albinicus, this specific rat is Ratus albinicus. Then those common indoor rats are called um, Ratus ratus. Sex identification. Okay, as I said before, this particular one is a female. Um, because it has the nipples, which signify the presence of mammary glands within. Then it has the clitoris. Um, right down here. It has an opening. And then um, it has the vulva, which is this opening you can see here. Okay. And then in case it were a male, we would see the penis enclosed in a sheath of skin and a pair of scrotal sacs. Um, the, the roles of the sex organs, since this is female, a valve which you already seen and the vaginal opening I use for copulation. A clitoris is used for sensitivity during copulation. And the nipples, I believe you all know, are, are for circling the, the, the little ones, the young rats. And then if it were male, we'd have the scrotal sacs that protect the testes, uh, the prepuce that protects the penis and keeps it moist for lubrication during copulation. And yeah, of course the penis is used for copulation. So the rat, a rat has got two regions, that's the the head and the trunk. The head stops somewhere here and the trunk goes on. Then you also have the tail. So our head, the parts, we are going to talk about the different structures that are found in the head. We have the whiskers that are used for, no, we have the whiskers, I'm just going to tell you about the parts. The whiskers, and then you have the, the ear, the external ear. And then we have the eyes, as you can see them. And then we have the nostrils right here and they are curved and then we have the the yeah the whiskers i've talked about them then we, in the trunk we have the fur the nipples since this is female and we have the the limbs over over our heart. and then 
I think that is it. And then of course the tail and the posterior end. Yeah, those are the structures that we find making the different sections of the rat, regions of the rat. Um, we're going to look at the descriptions of the adaptive, sorry, descriptions and adaptive significance of these external features. Um, the head, the head is ovoid in shape and it tapers anteriorly. This, this is the anterior part, this is posterior, and this is the dorsal, this is the ventral, and then the side, this side is the lateral. Sides. So he said um, the head tapers anteriorly and this is going to enable the rat to burrow because it's a rodent so it, it, it needs to burrow and then um, also for swift locomotion because the shape of the head is going to reduce on the air resistance as it's walking around. Um, it has incisor teeth which are two pairs yeah, the, this one, this two, is two pairs of incisor teeth, and they are long, they are curved, um, they are sharp, and they have, um, they are hard, okay, for cutting and biting food and for defense against predators. Mm. Um, it has nostrils, which are right here two nostrils and they are very tiny, they are hollow and they are moist, they are coma shaped and the main reason why they are hollow is for passage of gases within them. Um, the, we have the upper and lower lips, this is the lower lip and this is the upper lip. The upper lip has a cleft, this which exposes the two upper incisor teeth and um, the lips are mainly for sensitivity. Then it has whiskers. And these whiskers are long, as we can see. They are fairly stiff and they are away from the body. They are spaced and they are not so close to each other and therefore sensitivity, especially when burrowing. So we're going to talk about the other parts, the external features of the rat. We have the external ears, and they are finer shaped, they are broad, and they have, um, the hairs on them are, are really few, as you can see, and they are large, they are broad or large, and this is the, the final shapedness is to enable is to is to transmit the sound waves into the inner ear. Then they are broad enough so they can trap enough sound waves as to enable them to hear and listen and everything else. And then we have the eyes. They are they are dorsal. They are, this is the dorsal side, so you can see they are Dosovent, they are dosolaterally placed to enable a wide field of view as the animal keeps moving. And then they, they are well protected with the upper lid and the lower lid. And then it also, the eyes are moist to prevent friction as it keeps rotating around. And then we have the neck, and you can see that the neck is really, really thick and loose this because there's a lot of fur in this place and this prevents like in case of a predator a predator does not easily kill the animal since there's a lot of thick fur here so it's not easily killed in the process of of hunting it down and then we have the trunk region which which is divided into the thorax and the abdomen and the trunk is the trunk is not like the abdomen, whereas the abdomen is yielding, the trunk is firm. This is because of the rib cage that's in that area called. And then the, the, the thorax, I mean the thorax and the, 
the thorax and the abdomen make up the trunk and the thorax is, is firm whereas the, the, the abdomen is yielding this is to give enough space this is to give enough space just in case it has eaten enough food and to be able to stretch yeah so we have the fur that covers up most of the body this is to conserve heat and it's for protection from mechanical injury then we have the limbs there are four as you can see and they have five digits and this is for stability and support then the digits are jointed like we have you can see this when i you can feel you can notice that they are jointed and this is for flexibility and for grasping objects yeah and then and then they are also padded to absorb they are padded the the the, the feet are padded to, to in case of friction during locomotion they have to increase the friction so that they are firm as an animal is walking and also to prevent making noise so that the predators cannot notice the presence of the animal. And then the digits have claws. They are here. I hope you're able to see them. And they are narrow and long. And this is the narrow, long, curved, and they have sharp tips. They are really sharp and they are hard. And then the claws are for, are for burrowing and protection from the, from as a as a way of defending themselves in case of any attack yeah that is it about the external structures so we're going to look for the superficial features or structures of the rat those ones that lie right under the skin so that involves dissection because we'll have to first you know remove the skin and see what we want to see so we shall have to first pin it to the board firmly with the ventral side uppermost. Yeah. With four pins, pin each limb. Yeah. First, cut off a small part to create a slit where you're going to hold and cut inside. So now we're going to remove the connective tissue because we have to pin the skin to the board. And this connective tissue attaches the skin to the underlying body well and it is firm. So you have to gently remove it, otherwise you rip the rat open before you see the superficial features. So after cutting the skin, I'm going to pin it to the board. Okay. 
Okay. Um, now the superficial structures, we have the muscles. These are the muscles in the neck, then the arm region and upper, upper part of the trunk, the thorax. There are muscles there, and then also the muscles in the thighs. Then, okay, if, if it were pregnant, we would clearly see the mammary glands, but since it's still young, probably, we can't clearly see the mammary glands from inside. Then, um, we're going to get inside. Yeah, we, the, there are also blood vessels. These are the femoral veins. And then the cutaneous. The cutaneous thing, just there. Yeah. The, around the armpit region, and these are the femoral veins. Then um, the the nerves. Then these white things above the blood vessels are the nerves. I think we can clearly see them. Just there. Get into the inside and see the abdomen and the features inside. Now, um, when we've, we've just opened up the abdomen, we see the structures of the abdomen in situ or undisplaced, just as they lie before you remove anything or, you know. Now, these are the liver lobes. There are three. Um, this is one. Then the second one is there. And this is the third. This is the stomach. And the spleen, which lies just on the side, just there. Then this is the ilium, which is long and curved, goes round. And then this is the colon. It's striated. And then, um, yeah, this is still part of the colon. And yeah, so now next we're going to displace the ilium to the left of the animal, which is my right at the left of the animal, so that we see the structures that have been hidden under there. We're going to displace the ilium to the left of the animal so we can see the structures. Like my colleague said earlier on, that. Yeah, that are, are within it. The ilium is a bit long and very much coiled, but we'll displace it anyway. Yeah.
We have displaced our ileum to the left of the animal. Then we'll displace the, the duodena to, to my left. And then we're going to displace the, the liver lobes anteriorly so we can be able to see the esophagus inside. So as you can see, the esophagus is this tube that is connecting to the stomach. And then we have, just after the, so the esophagus, then we have the duodenum that is coming out of the stomach. And then just within the duodenum, we have the pancreas, this paper membrane yes, like membrane is a pancreas. Then we go on to the ileum and you can see the ileum is really cold and it has got some blood vessels, little blood vessels distributed in it. So when we displace our liver anteriorly, we see the bile duct that's from the liver. This is our bile duct. Then you also see the hepatic portal vein that we all know that carries the blood from the ileum to the liver. And the hepatic portal vein moves down, and these are its, its distributaries that you see, the distributaries that you see of the hepatic portal vein. Yeah, then this is our colon. Then right from the ileum, we go to the appendix that's this end, and then the appendix continues to the cecum or caecum for purposes of spelling. And then we have the colon that we see here, and the colon has got this is our appendix that goes into the caecum. Then from the caecum, we have the colon. As you can see, the striations are there. Right next to the colon, we have some lymph nodes, and they are seven in number. Then we have the mesentery that's right about this. So as you see, the spleen comes along with the stomach because it's attached to it. And then, um, okay, this is the kidney. And then um, this is the lymph node, just right there. And then this is the adrenal gland. And then, yeah, now we're going to the urinogenital system. But in order to see that, we'll have to first cut out the whole digestive system for us to be able to see all the things clearly. This is the urinogenital system. We are going to look at the reproductive parts of the female rat. Yeah. So we have the. This is the left ovary. You can see something that's circular and as if coiled. That's the 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 left ovary. And then we have the oviduct, just the the small little tube that connects it to this other part. That's our oviduct. And then we have the uterus. This is the uterus that has got the, the supply of blood vessels to it. And then we have the vagina. This is the vagina, this part that, that connects to the clitoris. This is the clitoris. And right next to the clitoris are the prepucial gland, these little things here on both sides on both sides of the clitoris since this is the female that is all that we have in the urinogenital system so now um, we're going to see the thorax 
So we'll have to first remove this part and we're going to first cut and leave the diaphragm down. We're going to hold, okay, there's supposed to be a symphoid cartilage right there, but due to unavoidable circumstances, <laughs> we've not been able to have it just there. So, cut both sides. So we're going to cut um, along the side in order to display the heart and all the blood vessels that lie there. The ribs are a bit tough. After the ribcage has been removed, then we have to remove the connective tissue so that we can see the blood vessels clearly. You have to be really, really careful so that we don't cut the, the blood vessels or we'll just have a messed up specimen. This is our heart, as you can all see. And from the heart, we have the iota the pale colored blood vessel that has got the carotid artery and the innominate artery branching from it going to the upper region of the of the rat. Then we have the vena cover. This is this is the anterior vena cover and we have two two vena cover. And they have the the artery, the veins branching from them going to the hands and up into the neck region, which we haven't yet looked at. We need this place a little to this, to the, to the left of the specimen. We can see the track here down that will branch into the, the lungs. Then, yeah, so this, these are the lungs. The, the one on the right has got three lobes and the one on the left is just a single lung. So now we are going to look at the head region, especially the mouth. We are going to dissect and see what's inside and what features are inside. So. Go that. The gels are really stiff, so you have to use a little more effort while cutting them because they are hard and very, very firm. So we have the upper lip and the lower lip and these are the incisors that we happen to cut in the process. Then we have the, the molars and there are three. There are six on the upper jaw and the six on the lower jaw. And then we have the ridges. Yeah, so we have the ridges, the 
hill-like structures here and then those that take on the valleys in the red are the grooves. Yeah. Then we have the opening to the rotation tube, these two. And then we have the opening to the oesophagus, which is this. Yeah. Then we have our tongue, as you can see, it's really long and, and it's firmly attached at the base. And that is basically it. That is all about the okay. ratus albinicus. I hope you like.